Okay, hi everybody, this is Dr. Manning, and this video is going to be how to do a 1040 form for a young adult. So hopefully you have already watched the video about how to do a 1040 form for a high school student. Um, if you have not done so, I am going to recommend that you stop this video now and go back to that one. And the reason is, is because in this video I am going to skip uh, through some of the things that I talked about in that video. So if you have not seen it yet, it could be a little confusing. Okay, so all that being said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do taxes for this guy named Marcus. So Marcus is 24 years old. He's not married and he, want, and he works one full-time job. By the way, you should be able to get the info sheet for Marcus on Canvas. It's available to you. The other thing that you need to do this is a blank 1040 form, which is also linked on Canvas. Okay, so back to Marcus. He has one job. He worked for Ford Motor Company, and they just sent him his, sent him his W-2 form, which is right here at the bottom of our scenario. And basically, we are going to try to determine if Marcus owes more money or if he gets a refund. All right. So back over here to this form, you usually would start off by filling all this out. Um, but since we already went through that in the first video, I am not going to go through that now. However, make sure that when you are doing this, that you put in Marcus's information, that he is single, right? And his social security number, along with his street address and city, state, and zip code, okay? Marcus will not click on this box because he is 24 years old. He lives by himself. He has his own job. So unlike Marty in the first scenario or the first video, uh, Marcus won't click on this. Okay. Uh, and he, he also, of course, won't click on either of these as well. And he's not married, so we don't need to fill out the information about the spouse. All right. So let's go ahead and scroll down to this area. And I'm going to zoom that in just a little bit. Let's uh, scroll down to this area and let's start filling this out for Marcus. All right. So Marcus worked one job. His W-2 form is right here. And I can see by his W-2 form that he earned $52,648.12. That's pretty good for Marcus, especially a 24-year-old. So we are going to put that in box one. And reminder from last time, the government prefers you to use whole dollars, so we're going to round that 12 cents off. Okay. Boxes 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, when we were doing Marty's tax return, all of these were zero because he was a high school student and he wasn't earning any additional money. However, I think Marcus's situation is slightly different. Um, you can see in the second hint, it says Marcus does have a savings account. He earned interest of $51.14. So that goes right here in this tax exempt interest. Uh, we are going to, or taxable interest, excuse me. Uh, we are going to put the amount that Marcus earned from his savings account there. Uh, that is uh, money that the government is going to tax him on, so we need to include it in. Now, I don't think he has anything else. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything in here about him having a retirement account or getting dividends from investments. So we are going to go ahead and put zeros in boxes three, four, and five. Oh, I put one extra one there. Okay, so box six says that we need to add these five together. So we are going to need to add up 52648 with $51. And if you need to break out a calculator, feel free to do that. But I am pretty sure that it is 52699 Okay. Box 7, adjusted gross income. I'm going to take a look and see. No, I don't, it doesn't say anything about Marcus having that. So we are just going to move the amount from line 6 down to line 7. Okay, line 8, standard deduction. We talked about this in the first video. Over here on the left, it tells you what amount to use depending on your uh, life situation. Marcus is single, so therefore he is going to use $12,000. 
All right. And the government is saying that Marcus, there are $12,000 of Marcus's income he does not have to pay taxes on. Qualified business income, Marcus worked for Ford last year. He did not have his own business, so that is going to be a whopping zero. And then line 10, it says subtract lines 8 and 9 from line 7. So we need to subtract 12,000 from 52,699. I think that is going to leave us with $50,699. Okay, now box 11, we need to probably spend a little bit of time on. This is the amount of tax that Marcus should have paid. So in the very first video, we put a zero here. And the reason we put a zero there is because uh, Marty did not have any money that he earned that he should have paid taxes on. Marcus is in a different situation. He's an adult. He makes more money. So this line right here, line 10, it says that Marcus should have paid taxes on $50,699 of his income. So we have to use this thing called the tax table, and there is a link to this in um, our on Canvas, but it looks like this right here, and this is available on the IRS website as well. And we need to look up on this tax table how much Marcus should have paid in taxes. So I'm going to scroll down, and I need to remind myself one more time. He made 50699 Okay, so we need to scroll down. And all of these boxes are in $1,000 increments. So we are looking for $50,000. And uh, there it is here in the bottom left corner. I'm going to zoom into that one so that we can see it a little bit better. Maybe a couple more times. Okay. So this is the box for $50,000. Marcus earned $50,699. So all of these lines are in $50 increments. So we need to find the line that 50699 falls into. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be right here. And I'm going to highlight the whole thing so we can easily see it. Okay. Now, there are four amounts in this line. If I scroll up just a little bit and show you the column headings, you can see that the first box is for single people. Second box is married. Third box is married. Fourth is for head of household. Remember, Marcus is single, so he is going to take the number from the very first column, which happens to be $7,088. So, in box 11, we are going to put $7,088. This is the amount of money that Marcus should have paid in taxes in 2018. All right, box 12. Child tax credit, Marcus does not have any children, so that's a zero. Box 13, subtract line 12 from line 11. It's pretty easy subtraction there. We're going to make it 7,088 again. Box 14, other taxes. I need to double check Marcus's situation. Yeah, he does not have any other taxes. So it says place a zero in box 14, so we will do that. Box 15 says add lines 13 and 14 together, so we're going to do that as well. Box 16, federal income tax withheld from the W-2 form. So we need to go to Marcus's W-2 form right here. We need to look in box 2, and it looks like in 2018 Marcus had $7,490 withheld from his paychecks. Uh, for federal income taxes. So that's the amount that Marcus already paid. So we're going to put that, 7490 Okay. Box 17, refundable credits. He didn't have any of those either. That's a zero. Box 18, it says add lines 16 and 17 together. So 7490 all right, so we have gotten all the way down to the refund portion of the 1040 form. It says, if line 18 is more than line 15, subtract line 15 from line 18. All right, so line 18's got 7,490. Line 15 has 7,088. This one's higher, so we're going to subtract that from the other one. So I'm going to get my handy-dandy calculator out here. All right. 
7,490 minus 7,088. And it looks like there is $402 left. So in box 19, we're going to put 402. Okay. So here's the deal. This is the amount that Marcus is going to get refunded to him. He paid 7490 in taxes, and he should have paid $7,088. Because he paid more than he should have, they're going to give him a refund back. Um, this one, of course, Marcus wants all $402. He doesn't want the government to keep any of it, so we're going to do that. And then, because he wants a direct deposit, you would fill out his routing and accounting account numbers here. All right, guys, that is all for Marcus. As you can see, most of this is pretty similar to the high school student, except for looking up that number on the tax table. That's probably the, the big difference. All right, thank you.